captains. Captains. Glory to God. That's what the Bible says David, they made David captain over them. In other words, they, they made him a captain. They, they were going to become captains. David was going to be king. You understand that? So um, y'all make sure y'all don't hold back on them. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, open your Bibles to Deuteronomy 28. I got too much movement up in here. There's a lot of noise. Oh, yeah, I didn't wear a tie tonight. Let me borrow your tie. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. It's one of my sons right there. He's going to give me his tie. <laughs> I like that. That's, that's right. That's right on. He's ready. He's ready. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2. Do y'all have that? Okay, let's join in and read together. Ready, read. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So we see there twice where it says there, obey the voice of the Lord your God. So we're talking tonight again on hearing the voice of prosperity. This is part three. I don't have a special subtitle for this. It's just hearing the voice of prosperity. We're going to ride it out to the Lord. It says, get off that train. Got it? So let's declare the blessing over this. So we're going to, again, go forth on this declaration we received uh, from our camp, camp meeting. All right. And let's read it all together. Ready to read. I will come to visions and revelations of who you are. Pour out your spirit upon me and make known your words unto me. Make me to understand the way of your precepts. So shall I talk of your wondrous works. Open up my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your word. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened that I may know what is the hope of your calling. Show me, Father God, great and mighty things that I know not of. Praise the Lord. You may take your seats in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. When, when you read that fifth one, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, it's, that, it's literally the eyes of your heart. It's that your inner man has to be enlarged and uh, to see great things from God. And one of the issues that people have in the body of Christ is that our hearts have not been enlarged enough to see what God is talking about. We see on uh, levels far below uh, what God's talking about. You understand what I'm saying to you? Uh, John said, I wish above all, this is 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, I uh, wish below, above that you prosper and be in health even as your souls prosper. And so your soul has to prosper um, in order to see the magnitude of what God's saying. Glory to God. Um, sometimes God does it through our dreams, like he did me the other night. Dreamed about stewards. <laughs> and some people couldn't, couldn't grab a hold of what I was saying when I was saying stewards. Um, but I'm telling you, uh, he, he was showing me beyond me. God always talks above you. God never talks where you are. He always talks far above you because he's trying to pull you somewhere. If he talks where you are, you don't need your faith. But if he talks above you, then you need your faith. And so don't expect me to talk where you are. You got it? I'm not going to talk where you are. I'm going to talk above where you are. I'm, I'm going to talk above where I am. That's what we've been doing for the last 15, 20 years is talking above where we are. Glory to God. We were talking about debt free when we, when we were so deep in debt we couldn't even breathe. We were talking living in abundance when we, we didn't have $5 put together. <laughs> right, I remember going to Bell's Outlet just waiting on the stick of colors to change. But we were talking something big because you have to talk above where you are. Glory to God. 
Dreamers do that. Dreamers do that. And God wants you to live your dreams. Because the dreams are from him. They're really, literally his dreams for us. So when God sees me, he sees me with stewards. <laughs> and when he sees you, he sees you with stewards. So, yeah, have, have to meet with your, your, your chief of staff at your house real quick. Generally, you'll, you'll have one main steward. As you, as you get bigger, you have one main steward who's in charge of all the other household staff. I don't know, y'all. I don't know if that's biblical. Joseph was a steward. In fact, I'm going I'm to I'm teach a series when I, as soon as the Lord get me off this here. Well, it's part of this here, but I got to teach it. On stewardship. Because, you know, before you can have stewards, you got to be a steward. The Bible says you got to be faithful in another man's. Faithful in what belongs to another man, then you can have your own. All right. Praise the Lord. So we're going somewhere big. Praise God. All right, now, so notice what God says here, Deuteronomy 28, that if you diligently obey his voice, observe carefully everything he commands, it says, he will set you high above all nations of the earth. So we're going high. So you and I aren't supposed to be in the middle class. Okay? And normally most folks' goal is to get to the middle class. If I can just make middle class, if I can just be able to, to get me two car loans and get me a house note, y'all ain't saying nothing. If I can just get that and, you know, get me maybe some jet skis and a boat in the yard and, you know, to finance everything, to, to, to be in the middle class. That's why I got to go to college, get me a degree, and I'll be $100,000 in student loan debt to do it, but I, at least I got it so I can qualify for the middle class. And it's really something uh, called the middle class mirage. That's what the Lord spoke to me. The middle class mirage. That it's, 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 a, it's a fake prosperity. It's a fake prosperity. It's not real. It's pretend. And so uh, it's really a, a trap. It's quicksand. <laughs> that sucks people into it and they're trapped and can't get out. And it kills them. Amen. Amen. But God said if we would follow his voice, we're going to be set on high. Above. So not middle class, not low class, high class, and not just high class, but in the top of the class. And you, you ever heard of somebody, the group called the 1%? Okay? We're supposed to be in that, in that top 1%, not just of the world. I'm already in the top 1% of the world. That's easy. I told you that. The, the stats tell you as long as you're out of debt, you don't owe anybody anything, and if you have $10, you're in the top 1% of the world. That, that's easy. I mean, you compare it to people in Sudan. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what you're talking I'm talking about 1% of the of, of America. <laughs> One percent of Europe. Y'all all right? I'm talking high above. Now, I know what y'all thinking. Y'all thinking well, all I make is $13, $13 an hour. I ain't talking about no $13 an hour. I ain't talking about that. I don't, I don't care how much you make. How much you make is not what determines if you get here. That has nothing to do with it. I don't care if you're working at Taco Bell, Wendy's, Cheddar's, Salvation Army. Come on. I don't care where you're working. If you can do this. Yes. See, this is not you will set yourself. This is, he said, uh, the Lord, your God, will set you high. Are y'all are y'all following me tonight? Yes, Glory to God. It's not based on your degree. No. Nothing wrong with a degree, but it's not based on that. Get a degree if God tells you to get a degree. If he don't tell you to get a, to get a degree, then definitely don't get in debt to get a degree. A degree. 
<laughs> right. Glory to God. There's plenty of ways to make money. If you're just trying to make money. Thank you, Lord. I was thinking somebody ought to start a, a new wash, dry, fold service. Y'all laughing, but I'm thinking about stewards. I'm thinking, see, I've been, I, this thing about stewards, this isn't just a passing flight, you know, flighty word to me. This is, this, I'm serious about that. Glory to God. Y'all will catch up by 2021. Oh, y'all going to go now? Okay, then act like you want to go with me down there. In verse 2, all these blessings shall tackle you. Wrestle you to the ground. Why? Because I obey. Because you work harder? Because you get another degree? No, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So your prosperity is tied to his voice. It's not tied to your job, to your, 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 your uh, skill, to your education level, not tied to your last name, not tied to your city, not tied to anything about you in the natural. It's tied to, can you hear it? Can you obey? He talked it this morning in prayer. Can you obey the voice of prosperity? That's all it is. And it's not hard. It's easier to obey his voice than it is to go to college. <laughs> Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm telling you. It's, it'll be much easier. Come on now. I'm not condemning college. All I'm saying is it's just much easier. You don't have to pay, take no PERT test, no SAT, no ACT. You don't have to have a certain amount of credits. You don't, have to, you don't have to get up, you know. Uh, well, you, you got to get up in the morning because you got to pray and spend time with God. But you, you, it's, it's a lot easier to just let God prosper you by obeying his voice. One-on-one. I'm the Lord your God, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, Isaiah 48, 17, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Okay? So we got a voice we can follow. Amen? All right. Now, uh, God's voice, I told you, always leads you to prosperity. Go to John 10. It's all right if we, if we review for a little bit. John 10. We have to. We got to get this here. Because I'm intent on going and carrying a busload with me. Who's going to ride on that bus with me? Come on, the wheels of the bus go round and round. Now, I want to know who's on the bus with me now. You know, the doors on the bus go open and shut. You know why? To let some on and to let some off. Now, I'm, I'm asking you, don't get off. If we got to build another, make it a double-decker bus, we'll get everybody on this bus as long as you want to get on this bus. We're going to ride, ride. <laughs> we can't no more. All the way to, to destination prosperity. Who going with me? Now, don't, don't fool me. Who going with me? All right. All right. Okay. Look at John 10 and verse 7. John 10 verse 7. Because I told you God's voice always leads to prosperity. John 10 verse 7. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be what? Save. Now, what does that word save mean? Born again? No, it's sozo. It's talking about you having perfect soundness in every area of your, of your life. That means physically, emotionally, spiritually, and financially having perfect soundness in your life. All right? So anyone who enters by me, he will be saved and go in and out and find pasture. Pasture represents, you know, he makes a lot down in green pastures. Pasture, pastures represent its abundance, prosperity. It's all your needs always being met. Yes, sir. Got it? Yes. So we're going to follow Jesus, right? Yes. Verse 10, the thief does not come. Y'all know this one, don't you? Yes. The thief does not come except to do what? Yes. 
steal, kill. So thieves steal, thieves kill, and thieves destroy. Got it? I have come that they, you, may have life, that's Zoe, and that you may have it, how? So we know from the, the Amplified, have it to the full, uh, enjoy it to the full till it overflows. Got it? So God wants me to have an overflowing life. Now, drop down, please, to verse 27. Same chapter, verse 27. Jesus talking still, right? My sheep. My sheep. I don't hear God. Well, you better check whether you're a sheep. Because if you are a sheep, and I believe you are, then you need to stop confessing, I don't hear his voice. Start confessing, I hear his voice. I hear his voice. Everybody say, I hear his voice. I hear his voice. Glory to God. Glory to God. I remember when God dealt with me on that a few years back. Stop saying you don't hear my voice. You hear my voice. I'm your shepherd, you're my sheep. Or I'm your shepherd, you're my sheep. So you hear my voice. So as I begin to say that, I begin to hear his voice more. Got it? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Watch verse 28. And I give them, here it is again, and I give them what? Pa- Pastor, Pastor Rashawn, what do you give them now? Y'all remember he preached on that here a few weeks ago? I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. That's the eternal life is the Zoe kind of life. It's the God kind of life. He said, they, they hear my voice. I know them. They follow them. And I give them the best life possible on this planet. Yeah. See, so whenever you hear God's voice, hear the voice of the Lord, he's leading us into prosperity. Got it? Now, when, he, when you hear his voice, sometimes you hear God's voice directly. How many of y'all have ever heard God's voice directly? All right, you've heard him speak to you. But many times, in fact, I contend most of the time when you hear him, you're going to hear his voice through a man or woman of God. And when you don't hear it directly through that man, man or woman of God, when you're on your own and you hear his voice, it's going to sound like. Right? It's going to sound like you're a man or woman of God. There are plenty of times y'all have heard me in your bedroom and I ain't never been in nobody's bedroom but mine. You've heard me in your car. And I ain't, I'm not riding in anybody's car but mine. But you're about to make a decision, do something stupid, and all of a sudden you hear my voice. It wasn't my voice. Samuel, it wasn't my voice. It was the voice of God, but it sounded like Eli's voice. His man of God. Eli was his man of God. And every time God called him, he ran to Eli. Because he thought Eli was the one talking. Got it? So you're constantly hearing God's voice. And every time you hear God's voice, it's leading you into prosperity. Okay? <clears throat> but you need good men and women of God. Go to Jeremiah 23, please. Jeremiah, that's back in Old Testament. Second book of the major prophets here. If you find Isaiah, go over one book to Jeremiah. Okay, Jeremiah 23. Let's look at this, how important it is. And what part of what God's heart is, God is looking for some people like this here. Jeremiah 23, are you there? Verse 1, woe to the shepherds. Now, Jesus just just described himself as a shepherd, right? He says, woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. So there are shepherds. Come on now. I, I was talking to a guy today. He come by, he, he needing money and a ride and all that kind of stuff. You know, they come a lot of here. And uh, so I gave him a ride. So I'm talking to him about the Lord. What, what, what church you go to? Oh, I go to churches everywhere. All churches everywhere. First of all, I know he's lying. But secondly, I said, well, you can't just go to church everywhere. That's not how it works. I just go to wherever I feel like it. It don't work that way. That's why you walk and I'm giving you a ride. See, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, I, I changed. I told you that. So I'm just telling people straight up now. <laughs> it don't work that way, cuz. No, you need a church. You need a pastor. You need a man of God. So because there are some shepherds who are scattering, destroying and scattering the sheep. Glory to God. Verse 2. 
Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the shepherds who feed my people. You have scattered my flock, driven them away and not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for the evil of your doings, says the Lord. So you're not taking care of the people. How are you not taking care of people? You're not, pre- you're not bringing the glad tidings of, of, good, of good things to them. You're not preaching the truth to, to them. Verse 3, but I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their foes. Watch what God says. And they shall do what? Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Come on. So God's MO, when he brings them back, when he brings people into a fold, when he gets people gathered together in the right place, he expects you to now to become fruitful and to increase. That's God's plan for us. Now watch this. Then he says, then he says, I will set up shepherds. These are going to be his voices over them who will do what? Feed them and they shall feed them. Now, 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 wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Um, glory to God. Now, it says, I will set up shepherds over them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Who will feed them? Now, back in verse 2, they were feeding them. But they're feeding them junk food. That's good, Pastor Kim. They're feeding them junk food. See, it's not that those shepherds weren't feeding them, they were feeding them junk food and leftovers. Warmed up sermons they don't bought out of a book. They they go online, sermoncentral.com. You can buy you can buy a sermon for every every week, every day. You go find some sermon you heard somebody else preached on TV and that sounded good. It got a little rise out of the crowd, so now you're gonna preach that same sermon, but you never got revelation on your own out of it. There's nothing, you know, nothing wrong with preaching somebody else's message. If you bought it. If you bought it. So notice, the sheep were being fed, but they were being destroyed and being scattered because they were being fed poison. So God says, but I'm going to bring them back together. Glory to God. I'm going to bring them back to their folds. They shall be fruitful and increase. Verse 4, I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them. But watch what happens when you you have the shepherd that God set up. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. That word dismay simply means stressed out. So when you get fed the right stuff, you'll never fear anymore. You get fed the right things, you'll never be stressed out about anything anymore. And then it says, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. So you ought to get a message, a word that will bring you totally out of lack, out of distress, out of debt, out of bondage, out of sickness, out of all that confusion, into a place where you're enjoying the pasture that God has set up for you. Green pastures, where you are being fruitful and you're increasing. That's what God wants to see for his people. Fruitful and increasing. Fruitful and increasing. Y'all got it? All right. So Jesus Christ is the shepherd, right? The chief shepherd, the Bible calls him. Let's look over here in Luke 4. We've been looking at that here the last couple weeks, last message or so. Luke 4 and this 18. No, verse 16. So Jesus, he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. So he wasn't, he wasn't living there no more. <laughs> but he, he came to Nazareth. Remember I explained to you Sunday about Nazareth, right? That's the hood. That's the projects. Bethel Heights. I hope nobody lives in Bethel Heights. But that's where it was. That's, that's what it is. Okay, and then down, down in verse uh, 18, here's the announcement. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So there's an anointing on him, on this chief shepherd, to preach the gospel to the poor. So he's anointed to preach poor people out of uh, their 
poor condition, <laughs> out of their financial situation. He's going, going to Nazareth to preach this. I'm announcing I'm preaching to Nazareth. I'm preaching to, to people who are stuck. People who, are, who, who don't have a, a, a natural lifeline. In other words, there's not a natural, um, systematic way of you increasing. When he goes to Nazareth, these people who there's, there's, no, there's no help for them. They're just poor, they're oppressed, they're beaten down, beaten up, they're, 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 they're outcast, there's no hope. Uh, when, when Philip, one of Jesus' disciples, eventual disciples, when he heard, they said, hey, we found Jesus the Messiah. And they said he's from Nazareth. He said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? That's what he said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? This, this, I mean, people turn their nose up at Nazareth. Nazareth? Our Messiah can't come out of Nazareth. Can't nothing good come out of Nazareth. And yet he goes to Nazareth to preach the gospel to the poor. Y'all got it? So he's going to those in the worst condition here. Now, now I want you to to, uh, grab on the screen. They can put on the screen for us. James chapter 2 verse 5. James 2 verse 5. Because again, he goes to Nazareth, he's going to preach to the poor people to get them out of their financial destruction. Remember, these shepherds were teaching, were feeding, but they were destroying the people. What they were teaching was destroying people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So James 2, 5 says this. Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be or become rich In faith or through faith or by faith? Did y'all catch that? And heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him. So notice it says here that God sort of favors or directs his message towards the least of them. Towards those who uh, have uh, the, the, the most minute chance of having any sort of success. Those who people would just cast off and say there's, there's no hope for them. Glory to God. And it says, has not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith or to be or become rich in faith or rich by faith? The first thing Jesus did was he preached the gospel to the poor. Why did he preach the gospel to the rich? Huh? Because they are the rich. Mm. Because he said, you know, in Mark 10, how hard is it for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom? What's happening? Oh, man. So, so people who are already wealthy or rich, nothing wrong with them being rich. But when they trust in those riches, like the rich young ruler, they they can't convert to a different system. Now, I want to I want to say something here, Deke, because uh, most of you are I'm, I'm not trying to exclude myself, but I'm, I'm preaching to you. Most of you are not rich. Okay? Now I know one of y'all might have snuck in here. But most of you are not rich. But most of you are not poor. And to be in the uh, upper lower class, lower middle class, middle class is just as bad as being in the rich. Because the problem with the middle class Lower middle class, upper middle class, upper lower class, is that you have options. Long as I can swipe. As long as I can sign on to my, my name on a line and get my mortgage, equity, you know, equity line of credit. Long as I can do that, 
then what, what's happening is you are trusting in riches. Riches, sir. Come on now. Come on now. I know y'all don't. But we're just going we to just, just hit it straight, right? And people are, as, as the Lord told Dad a few years back, are comfortably in debt. Because debt allows you to look as if. Debt is, it allows you to pretend. Come on now. Come on now. Glory to God. It makes you look bigger than who you are. Glory to God. Well, I was able to get that car. No, you weren't. You financed the car. You financed the car. Right? Which means it's not yours, technically. You got to wash it, you got to insure it, you got to maintain it, but it's not yours. Yeah, until you get the title, it's not yours. Right? Now, I'm not beating anybody over the head. I'm just, I'm just trying to get you to understand that there's a reason why he chose the poor. It didn't say he chose the ones who could, who could finance everything. Or the ones who already had it. Because those people are generally trusting in that system. But when you poor, you can't finance Jack. Oh, y'all ain't saying. I'm just, I'm just, come on, let's just talk, man. When you poor and you walk into the bank and they ask, you say, I want to I wanna get me a car. And they say, well, you know, what kind of collateral do you have? Collateral? What's collateral? You denied, I'm sorry. Come back to us in two years when you have some money. Come back when you have some money. So, <laughs> You're trying to come there and get money, but they say, come back when you have money. Yeah. Kind of like you're going to apply for a job and they say, sorry, you don't have enough experience. Yeah. Well, how am I ever going to get experience yeah. until somebody hires me so I can get the experience? Yeah. So, so the, the system, the system oh, Rabbi, is designed to keep those who are poor oppressed and down and not have any any real hope of getting getting above water in any way. And then what it does is it tricks folk who do have uh, some decent sort of income, a job or whatever, to say, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll let you um, borrow something and they're they going to they gonna, they gonna give you enough rope till you hang yourself. Let me just tell you how the, how the thing works. Because what they're really doing is the whole, the whole point of debt and the middle class the whole point of it is for those who are rich to get those who are poor to get to get over in the middle class and then we're going to loan you money. You charge us interest and you're going to pay for our lives. It's the sub everything. Out of, that, that's, that's why every election cycle, every election cycle, they're talking about the middle class. In fact, they call it the dwindling middle class. Why is the middle class dwindling? Because people, when they're in this middle class and they're financing everything, they're tending, they're not tending to get richer, they're tending to get poorer. That's the way the system is designed. That's why God hates debt on his people. You can do it. He'll let you do it all day long, but he hates it. Because it makes you then trust in this system. And you're not putting your trust in him. Should I stop? <laughs> Dude, like my dad. See, because we got to hit that. Because it's, it's trickery. It's to get you to trade your, uh, your gold for a piece of a hunk of metal. Hunk of plastic. 
it's, 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 you follow what I'm saying? So there's a reason why he chose the poor. Because they don't have any. There's no escape. There's nothing. Jesus came, he said he preached the gospel to the poor. Why? Because these one, he, he expects the poor are the ones going to say, you know what? What I have to lose. What I got to lose. The bank won't help me. I can't, I can't go finance a, a bicycle. <laughs> Come on, now talk to me now. <laughs> so, so I, don't know, I don't know what situation you are in personally. I don't know anybody's personal situation unless you come and tell me. So you know where you are, so I'm, I'm asking you, hey, why don't you, instead of Playing around in that. Let's skip over that. Oh, go on it. That's what this this blessing will do. It'll cause you to skip, bypass middle class, and go from poor to rich, because the blessing of the Lord does not make middle class. Blessing of the Lord, Proverbs 10 22, it maketh rich and it has no sorrow of the middle class turmoil with it. You bypass all the frustration, you bypass all of the nakedness. The nakedness, you know what I mean by the nakedness? You got to sit in that office and, and give them your mother's maiden name and. They got to tell me your mother's maiden name. You got to give them your tax statements, and you got to give them all your last two years bank statements, and you got to tell, go about through all your who you owe money to. That's nakedness. That's exactly what what God got on Hezekiah about. King Hezekiah, he got uppity and decided he the people came through, and he gonna show them all the things that that he had. Isaiah went back, back to him and said, "What what have you done? What what you do?" He said, "Oh, I showed everybody my stuff." He said, "Man, now nah, nah, I got to take it from you." Don't be showing everybody everything that I gave you. You gotta open up your accounts to people. And <laughs> Glory to God. So he chose the rich, the poor rather, to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom. Heirs of the kingdom. Glory to God. So when you're poor, or when you're in debt, or when you're not living in abundance, you can become rich by faith. Okay? How are you going to do it? Well, because, or, or by God's miracle working power. Okay? Go to Galatians, please. Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get this word out. Just looking for hearers. I believe I have a few hearers on Wednesday night who can handle what we're talking about here. Again, you all know me. I'm not ever trying to beat anybody down, condemn anybody. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get you to skip and bypass the toil of the middle class. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I need you to know some, some, of, these, some of these high schoolers, you, you, may, you may not need to go to college. Don't you may not don't go just because it's expected. <laughs> Glory to God. First thing, first thing they do when you about to graduate, well, where are you going to college? We weren't going to college. Who said I was going to college? Well, you're supposed to go to college. Who said I'm supposed to go to college? I'm, I'm, again, I'm not putting down college. But you better go because he told you to go. And if he told you know you know one way he you know if he told you to go, he'll pay for it. If he if he don't pay for it, he ain't told you. Y'all hear what I said? If he don't pay for it, he didn't tell you. Sir, sir, you better stand to your feet. 
obey his voice. Blessings will come on, on you and overtake you. Yes, Too many people are getting stuck trying to do things that God didn't tell them to do and then trying to, trying to cry about God. Pay for God. I need you to pay for this. God, I need you to come through. I ain't tell you to do that. Oh, I can, I can go through many things that I, in my life I went back going out trying to get crying because God wasn't paying for it. And God said, I didn't tell you to do that. Well, what do I do? Shut it down. That's what exactly what he tells me. Shut it down. I didn't tell you to do that. You're doing that because that church doing that. I didn't tell you to do that. Y'all ain't playing. Y'all ain't playing. <laughs> Praise God. But whatever he tells me to do, he'll pay for it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Galatians 3, are you there? <clears throat> Verse 5. Verse 5. Therefore, he who supplies, yes. dot, dot, dot. Y'all got it? Therefore, he who supplies, fill in the blank. Now, it says here the spirit, but I just want to emphasize to you that he supplies. So, if this, go the other way, go the other way, man, go the other way, go the other way. So, therefore, he who supplies, whatever he supplies, and then it says, and works miracles among you. So here's how God does things. He supplies and works miracles. In fact, he supplies by the miraculous. Come on now. Manna from heaven. That's how God does it. Water out of a rock. He supplies by the miraculous. We call it divine supply. So he who supplies and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? You know this is a rhetorical question, right? What's the answer? By the hearing of faith. Okay? Now, so, how do you know, this is a question you can answer, how do you know when you have the hearing of faith? How do you know when you have the hearing of faith? I'll tell you. Number one, when you do what you hear. It's simple, but it's powerful. A lot of people think they have the power, the, the hearing of faith, but they're not doing what they heard yet. So, you know, you have it when you're doing what you hear. I always put people in, in, in this church who have been hearing for a long time, but not, not doing anything. I'm not saying anybody in here right now. I'm just saying in this church. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying. Because, and, and I show you because the second thing I'm going to show you is not only when, when you do what you're hearing, but then when you see what you heard. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Number one was what? When you do what you hear. Number two was what? When you see what you heard. Number one was what? Number two was what? So when you have the hearing of faith, the hearing of faith, not just hearing, but the hearing of faith. And remember, faith in James 1, 22 through 25, somewhere around there, it says faith without works or faith without accompanying actions is dead. So to say you have faith, but you're not putting any actions to that faith, it's faith, but it's dead faith. Glory to God. You ever, you ever had uh, uh, some little d electronic device and it had dead batteries? Your mouse, your iPad, your phone, whatever, the battery's dead. There's a, there's a battery in there. Somebody say, you got batteries in there? Yeah, I got batteries in there. But they're dead. That's just like having no batteries in there at all. <laughs> Anybody ever, ever had a dead battery in your car? That's just as bad as not having a battery in there at all. It's useless. So faith without works, faith is dead. It's just like having no faith at all. So you know you have the hearing of faith, number one, when what? You do what you hear. So ask yourself the question, 
inside. Am I doing what I hear? Am I doing what I hear? Am I waiting until passed away the magic wand over, over me? So he comes sprinkle something over my head when he's telling me to go wash in the Jordan seven times. I'm going to be healed of my financial leprosy if I wash in the Jordan seven times. But I want him to just sprinkle some dust over me. No, hearing of faith says, no, I'm going to do what I hear. I'm going to do what I hear. Oh, I believe the prophet. When you're going to do it then? Okay. And then number two, how do you know when you have the hearing of faith? When you see what you heard. So when you do what you hear, you will see what you heard. You're going to see it. It's going to manifest. Why well, have a manifestation? Well, have you done what you heard? What you're hearing? Well, I didn't, you know, I was, I was, uh, see? Did, did, did you put the eggs in the batter? Well, I don't, I don't like eggs. Well, that's why you didn't, you didn't get the, any, any, that's why your cake looked like that. Right? That's how, that's how it works. If I want to learn how to cook some chicken wings, I'm going to ask Barry. I'm going I'm to ask Peggy. They, they, do this, they do these wings, but it's crazy, crazy wings. It's hot wings. Hot, hot wings. Hot wings. Man, hot wings. And if I decide I'm going to do that for my family, I want to I wanna do some hot wings like that, boy. Uh, oh, you know I'm going I'm to just call Peggy or call. I'm, I ain't doing it myself. But if I want to know and they tell me, but I don't do what I heard, I family going to say, ugh. That don't taste like Peggy Wings. I can't get mad at them for saying that. So don't get mad at the preacher if you're not seeing what you heard if you didn't do what you what you hear. I can guarantee you, somebody's doing what they hear. Yes, sir. And somebody's seeing what they heard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Can I tell you something? Most of you, outside of, of Sister Patricia, outside of Sister Patricia and Letitia, I guarantee you, I, I believe from what I understand, most of you met Pastor Durber the same night I met him. If you were here back in uh, 2009, when he first came, the very first time, preached on a Sunday night, we did, I didn't know him from Adam. He let a stranger come in your church. I, I went on the word of one of the young men in our church. I trusted his word, and I, I, looked, no, I looked him up now. I, I Googled him. Don't get me wrong. I, I did Google it. <laughs> I did an Anissa number. I Googled him. And I liked what I heard, but I never met him, never, never, never talked to him. Till he comes here, remember Angie, we, we grabbed him, took him next door. And we go, Rabba Shata, we're trying to pray every demon off and make, make sure he has no demons or nothing. <laughs> You know that long haired white man come in your church, you don't, you like, Rabbi, this a hippie or something? We're going we to get demons out five miles outside of this place. Praise God. Turns out there's no demons. Praise God. Turns out he's a mighty, mighty man of God. He's an angel of the Lord. And I'm glad about it. Now, what I'm saying is, I didn't have any prior knowledge of him, didn't have any prior knowledge of his ministry, didn't have any prior knowledge of what he was teaching. I met him the same night. Most of y'all met him. Or many of y'all met him. You see where I'm going? <laughs> same time. So the reality is We should all be writing $5,000 checks at any time. 
I said we should all be writing $5,000 checks anytime. I'm all right. Well, you, you met him the same night I met him, right? What's the difference? Hearing of faith. Do what I hear. See what I heard. And the problem is, too many people just, well, I got to, let me pray about it. Let me, let me see if I trust him. I don't know if I trust him. I don't know if I, I don't know if I trust him. I don't know if I trust him. I don't know. I don't know. Let me pray about it. Let me see what the Lord said. I got to talk about it. No. So far, I'm not sure. Come on now. Come on now. Now I understand. I understand y'all were as apprehensive as I was. And we drug him next door. Come on. Before you even walk in this in this sanctuary, we're gonna drag you over here in the in the in the the, the, the decontamination zone over there. We're we gonna make sure you decontaminate it. Barbara, you weren't over there with us. Did you pray? You weren't didn't pray with us that night? Who, who was over there praying with us that night? I know Angie, you were in there. I thought Barbara was over there. You don't remember that? There was a few of us over there praying. You get in that circle, we're going to pray. <laughs> Praise God. So I understand apprehension. But when you preach and you open the Bible and you walk through the scripture and I see it in the word boom, 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 okay boom, boom, I can trust the word Jesus told, told some guys one time, he said if you don't believe me what I say, he said at least believe me for, my, for the very work's sake so that's something you can see glory to God, praise the Lord well guess what you're still alive I'm on the living there is hope we're going to all catch up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Glory to God. We're going we're to all rise up. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord because the Lord held, held the bus back long enough yeah. <laughs> for us all to get home. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right, now, um, are you still in Galatians 3? Yeah. Look at verse, verse 5 again. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you works miracles among you. Does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Okay, look at verse 6. Just as Abraham did what? Believe God. So Abraham must have had the hearing of faith because it says he believed God and then it was put into his account. Something was put into his account. That's what it is. It was accounted for him, accounted to him. It means it, something was put into his account. God's trying to get something credited to your account. What he's waiting on is not for you to get the degree. He's waiting on you for, for you to get the belief, to get the faith. Just believe what he said. So he can now have a authority, license to transfer some funds into your account. Glory to God. It was accounted to him for righteousness. Now watch this. Watch this. Says verse 7. Therefore know. Therefore know. Y'all see this? That only those who do it by faith. Oh, y'all got to catch it. Only those who do it by faith are sons of Abraham. We, 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 what did you say, D? We do like Abraham. We, we do like Abraham. We walk in the steps of that faith. So those who do by faith, we are sons. I throw in daughters too for all the people. All the people. <laughs> of Abraham. Now do y'all remember uh, Isaac? Remember Ishmael? Remember all the Keturah's boys? They were loaded. Notice what the scripture says here. Verse 8. And the scripture, capital S, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, faith preached the what? 
preach the what? Gospel. This is the good news, the glad tidings, the, the prosperity message. I, I gave you that word uh, the other day, right? Yeah. Evangelizo. That's the same word here. Preach the prosperity message to Abraham beforehand. Before all this manifestation came about, saying, in you, all the nations shall be blessed. So then, this is what I like right here. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with. Oh, man. Y'all know about Abraham. Those who are of faith are blessed right along with. Believing Abraham. King James calls him faithful Abraham or full of faith Abraham. So when you and I operate by faith, we are blessed with or just like Abraham. Now, maybe they haven't talked about or thought about Abraham, haven't contemplated Abraham's life. Quite a bit, but we can summarize his life in one verse, Genesis 13, verse 2. In the Amplified Bible, Genesis 13, 13 to the Amplified Bible says, Now Abram was extremely rich in spirit, in wisdom, <laughs> in discernment, in cattle, silver, and gold, livestock, silver, gold. Stuff. Besides that, he lived well over 175, about 175 years. 187 years, matter of fact. Long life. Prosperity. And now, about 137, he was still having kids. Brother Stafford. Deacon Mac, Minister Jeff, come on now. Deacon Robert, he's blessed. Now it's that blessed with, which means your body, spirit, soul, and body preserved, blameless. Well, that's that old, old age stuff. Abraham didn't have no old age problems. <laughs> Abraham didn't. No, he didn't. He did not. Oscar, what you having for Oscar? <laughs> Come on now. It's not too late. Not when you in faith. Now, I know that's, that's laughable, but I'm just saying, I want you to see what kind of guy Abraham was and how the blessing affected him in every area of his life. And we read specifically in Genesis 13, verse 2, that he was extremely rich. Since we're talking about finances here. Now, the implication is that didn't happen for him by the works of the law. It happened to him by the hearing of faith. Because of his faith, he believed, and it was put into his account. So when you get faith, God will put things into your account. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You all all right? Let's go a few more minutes here. Thank you, Lord. Now, so I got to get my hearing up. Everybody said I have to get my hearing up. Okay, Mark 4, 24. Mark 4, Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, and verse 24. I'm a, well, matter of fact, let's go back to verse 21. Mark 4, 21. You have it? Yes. Also he said to them, is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or under a bed is it not 
to be set on a lampstand. For there is nothing hidden which, shall not, which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. If anyone has ears, ears to hear, do what? Do you have ears to hear? Yes, now, I'm not talking about these flappy, floppy things on the side of your head. I'm talking about here in, in your heart. If you have ears to hear, hear. Give yourself to hear something. Now watch what he says, verse 24. Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. Take heed what you hear. Don't just hear it, but take heed to it. Don't just come in here and sit and hear this word like, oh, that was entertaining, and go home, and then you're just watching soap operas all day long. You got to take heed to it. Do it. Obey it. All right. Pastor said this. This is what God showed him. This is what the word is saying. Okay, I'm going to do this. Here's my, my explanation. I know I'm, I'm here right now. I'm, I'm this level right now, but God said this. This is where I'm going right now. Take heed to it. You're not going to stay on the level that you're on. It's impossible. Listen, let me, let me tell you something. You cannot stay around here, around this world, get fed like you're being fed, and do what, you, what you're hearing and stay on the same level. It is impossible. It's impossible. Faith is being released. Faith is being preached. If you're receiving it, this word, being demonstrated, if you're receiving it, observing it, patterning your lives after it, then don't tell me you won't stay on the same level for five years. It's impossible. It's impossible. You know what's possible? If you're on the same level, then you got, I got to check out who, what you're hearing. Take heed what you hear. What, what you hearing and who you, who you listening to? Who are you listening to? Because you might not be listening to me. Do you, you set, you, you good? All right, you strap. You might not be listening to me. You might be listening to somebody else in the crowd. You getting, you getting your, your instruction, your example, your pattern, your prophetic word from somebody in the crowd who on the same level you on. I ain't going nowhere. That's why you ain't going nowhere. What you say? She said that's... I didn't say it. She said that's stupid. I'm gonna just I'm gonna tell you straight up. You know you know one of the problems that people have in in church. It's not it's not just I found it's not just this church. I found there's other churches. I talked to other pastors. Is I'm your pastor. I'm your prophet. I'm the pastor, I'm your pastor, your prophet, right? Mm -hmm. But what people do is they put intermediate, they put middlemen between Okay, so I'm your pastor, your prophet and Yo, you you putting people between. You got moms and dads in the crowd. You been there? What you say? You said you been there. Okay, she said she been there. So I know I ain't lying. Well, you got ma, other moms and dads in the crowd. And what's happening is. Whoever you make mom and dad, that's where you, that's your cap. You, you keep bouncing up against that cap. We ain't going nowhere. That's why lives start to look alike. That's why everything, finances look alike, marriages look alike, all that kind of stuff. Look, because, because people are, you, you, bam, you keep, why, why would you do that? You 
If I can go to Best Buy and get the computer myself, why would I buy it from you and you're going to buy it from Best Buy? I can just go to Best Buy. Myself. See, that's, that's just... So, so that, that has an adverse effect on what you hear. Absolutely. Telephone game. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Take heed what you hear. The problem, you got to make sure, though, that you're hearing right. And what happens is when you, when you, when you put, when you put uh, filters, that's, the, that's a good word. I was, the word I was going to say was mufflers. But a filter is a better word. Between what's being preached up here and you, you got a filter. Now you, don't, you can't get a good measure. You're getting a lesser measure of the word. Because you're going you gonna to run. Here's this. I'm going to just bust somebody in here. You're going to run what you heard from me through somebody else. But what you think about that? What the, what the, what, what the, what you think about that? You gonna, you gonna hear the truth from here or not? What you gonna hear the truth? So take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And, and to you who hear, more will be given. Are y'all hearing this here? I think I gave you that same verse. Let's move on. Let's move on. In the Living Bible, because this is what I want you to catch about this Living Bible. And be sure to put into practice what you hear. It's not enough just to hear it. It says put into practice what you hear. The more you do this, the more you will understand what I tell you. So what's happening is people are trying to understand it before they do it. Oh, y'all missing. You're trying to understand it before you do it. And that, that's why some of y'all, we were in the same, same place here in Pastor Durba at the same time. I'm going to do it. You're trying to understand it. But that ain't how it works. Put into practice what you hear. The more you do this, the more you will understand what I tell you. Understanding comes through doing. Hallelujah. That's the programming. That's exactly right. The more you do this, the more you will understand. So I, I'm going to admit, I didn't understand much of what we were being taught. But I know it was right out of the word. So we just, it, we're just going to do it. And the more we did it, the more, oh, oh, okay, that's, clarity came. Are y'all following me? So, well, Pastor, how am I going to get from where I am now to where you're talking about? It's just, that's going to do it from now. That's all. That's all. You redeem the time. You just start doing it. And the understanding will come. And what happens, the more you understand, of course, the easier it is to do it. <laughs> you do it. It's just, it just happens that way. You got it? Y'all got a couple more minutes? Yes, sir. Glory to God. Matthew 13. Now, Mark 4, when he says this, he gets ready to talk about this. Uh, he had just explained the parable of the sower. Let's go back to Matthew 13's version of this. Matthew 13. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'll close out here in just a minute. You're not in a rush. Matthew 13, verse 23 in the New King James Version. Y'all know this parable of the sower, right? Of the grounds. Verse 23 says, but he who receives seed on the what? Good ground, Good ground is he who does what? Hears, Hears the word and? It. Now, how are you going to get from hearing to understanding? Do you do it. See, I told us that's how you're going to get from hearing to understanding. All right. 
who indeed bears fruit and produces some what? Some 60 and? Okay, now let's switch on that same verse, please, to the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation. I want you to see this. I want you to see the Passion Translation. This is, this is this will help us right here. As for the seed that fell upon good, rich soil, it represents the hearts of people who hear and what? Fully embrace. Fully embrace the message of heaven's kingdom. So you know you have rich soil, for, at least for the seed of the word, when you hear and fully embrace. How do you know you fully embrace it? When you do it. When you do it. And then you start seeing the fruit. That's what happens. Their lives bear good fruit. Some yield a harvest of 30, 60, even 100 times as much as was sown. So you'll start seeing manifestation of the word, the revelation in your lives. Guaranteed. Guaranteed is God's system. Amen. Amen. Now, you know this last scripture I want to give you here tonight before we check out. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. Second Chronicles 20, verse 20. And then we'll pick up from there on Sunday. Because I think we ought to just keep going. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We might as well keep slapping the devil yes, <laughs> upside his head, just knocking him out. Yes. Just take him out. Yes. Second Chronicles 20 and verse 20. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be what? Then it says, believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. So this guy, uh, when, when Jehoshaphat, when they first got in a little trouble, uh, the trouble, the armies came against them, he began to cry out. But if you were, I'm not going to read it, but if you were to go back to verse 14, you'll see where the spirit came upon a man named Jehaziel, and he began to give a prophetic word, a prophetic voice of prosperity. What happens? So when he finishes, then is where Joshua picks up and says again here, hey, believe in the Lord your God. You'll be established. Then believe, notice the word in is left out. Now it just says believe his prophets. Believe in the Lord, but then it says believe his prophets. In other words, just do what they were telling you to do. Okay? And it says, and you shall do what? Prosper. And you shall prosper. You shall prosper. Now, what's important is here, I'll say this one last thing. And maybe give one last verse here. Is, it says, believe in the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Now, it said, believe his prophets. So you have to know the difference between his prophets and your prophets. We'll pick it up on Sunday. Because the Bible has all kinds of places where God talks about, he talks about your prophets. He's, all the places, many places he said, your prophets. But then there are places he said, my prophets. So God has prophets. And then he said, he, he understood the people, sometimes they get their own prophets. This is what I was just trying to tell you. Jeremiah 29, verse 8. <laughs> For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets. Y'all see that? Everybody see that on the screen? Do not let your prophets and your diviners who are among you. I'm going to drop that mic. Let me hold that mic. I'm going to drop that mic. <laughs> this message. Kirk is like, no, don't, 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 don't. So do not let your prophets and your diviners 
who are in your midst deceive you. Nor, now watch, don't just put on the prophets. He says, no, listen to your dreams, which you cause to be dreams. So some of these things you dreaming up. Put the Lord name on it. Well, I saw a dream and whatever, whatever. No, some of this stuff is just your dream. What you cause to be dreamed. How I cause to be dreamed. Well, what, what you went to bed thinking about. What, what you went to bed watching. What you went to bed listening to. What you, what you eat. <laughs> what you reading all day. And all this stuff that, that you ingest into your spirit all day long. Then you lay down and you dream up something and you're like, ooh, I think the Lord, the Lord told me that so-and-so husband going to be my husband. Okay. That's not, no, you dream that. You caused that dream. You was thinking about so-and-so husband all day long. And you caused that dream. Oh yeah, you can cause a dream. But I dreamt that same dream three nights in a row. Well, you spent three days thinking about him. To get on the altar and repent. That's a married man. That's the man of my dreams. No, no, that's the man of your dreams. That's not the man of God's dreams for you. It's man in your dream. That's right. So you have to know. And you'll see there are many times in the scripture where God says, your prophets, your prophets, your prophets. And he'll pleasant way to say, my prophets. Remember, the word was, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Now we, you know, in this church, we're blessed to have people in the prophetic ministry and so forth. And, and if, if they weren't his prophets, I wouldn't even let them get in the microphone. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? These are his prophets. I've met some of the people that they just prophets. They send me copy, cut, copy, copy, paste prophecies. <laughs> Let me Google that. He's prophet line. He ain't... <laughs> you bought that one, all right? You got a subscription. <laughs> Prophecy.com. That's that's real. Oh yeah, just. There's all kinds of stuff you can buy on, on the internet. You, you can get goofy as you want to be. But what happens is people, according to Jeremiah 23, are being destroyed and scattered because they're feeding on the wrong thing. So they're on junk food, leftovers, poison. But when you eat the truth of the word of God, it's going to bring you into your uh, place of prosperity, dominion. Fullness, overflow, divine health, divine life, peace in your marriage, peace in your family, glory to God, peace on the inside, peace on the outside, no more drama, no more toil, no more dismay, no more lack, no more fear. That's when you know you're eating good. Amen. Well, that's all the time I have tonight. Why don't you give God a praise if you receive that word tonight? Praise the Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you tonight for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for your people in your house, hearing your word, obeying your voice. Thank you, Father, that your plan and your dream for us is to live a life 
and abundant life and eternal life right here on this earth, oh God. Thank you that you desire us to have days of heaven on the earth, to take us back, Lord, to the days of Adam before the curse. Thank you that we are living in the time of the restitution of all things, oh God. Thank you that we're living in the times of refreshing that come from the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Father, that you are blessing us indeed. You are lavishing your generosity, lavishing your blessing on us, oh God. Thank you because we are uh, giving heed to your voice. We are obeying your voice, Father. And you're causing blessings to come on us and overtake us. You are raising us up, Lord, high above all nations of the earth. And I thank you, Father, that as your people walk in li and live in the blessings, that as we get to enjoy this life, that Lord will also have in our minds to never forget that it's you who gives us power to get wealth. We'll never turn to the right or to the left to serve any other God but you. We'll never begin to think that it's just, it was us, that we're not, we'll never be self-made anything. We'll always be those who you have made us rich. You have made us strong. You have made us whole. Thank you, Father. And that God, will, it'll be our pleasure and our joy to also help make others rich. That's what Paul said. Paul said he was making other people rich. Hallelujah. So it'll be our joy and our pleasure to do just that same thing, God. So I pray for your people in this house, those who are here, those who may be tuned in online, those who may watch later, that, Father, that whatever hinders that there has been in us, such that we have not taken heed to what we've heard, if we've not had the hearing of faith in, in various areas of life or uh, of the teachings, or if we have been still trying to investigate still have apprehensions and just won't do what we're, what we're hearing. I pray that God you let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Flood our hearts with light. Your word says, Father, that the entrance of your word gives light. It brings light and it gives understanding to the simple. So let your word enter into our hearts and produce in us that which you want it to produce. Enlarge us. Thank you for this group of people who comes out on Wednesday night, Father, who they're, they, they, they want to go deeper. They want to go deeper and want more uh, of the mysteries and revelation of the kingdom of God. I pray, Father, that you would enlarge our hearts, let our souls prosper, that when we hear great and mighty things, we're not offended. Great and mighty things we're not uh, put off by. Great and mighty things we don't, we don't disqualify ourselves from being able to have and enjoy those things. But know, Lord, that you are the same Lord who is over all, and you said you're rich to all who call upon you. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that we'll walk in it. Now I pray that as we prepare to leave this place, that you will be with us and continue to keep us. Bless us over this weekend. Protect us, Lord. We know that this world and our nation is filled with dangers on every side, but you said, Lord, even if a thousand fall on our side and 10,000 on our right hand, it will not even come near us. Thank you that we are protected. Our shields are up. The hedge of blessing, the hedge of protection is around us. Thank you that we have a covenant of life and peace. And you continue to keep us every day. Now I pray and I declare the blessing of the Lord upon every person in this room, every family, every marriage, every household, every business, everyone's career. I pray that, Father, that that blessing would make us rich financially and add no sorrow with it. That it would make, make us rich in every way and add no sorrow with it. I ask for your voice to be heard. For everyone who's at a crossroads of life, trying to, to determine their next step. God, you lead us in the way that we should go. Guide us with your eye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We trust you with all of our hearts. We lean not to our own understanding. In all of our ways, we acknowledge you. Thank you for directing our paths. Continue to keep us and bless us in all that we do. And God, we will continue to give you all the praise and the glory and all the honor we pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Put those hands together again.